Hey there guys and welcome back. So it has been a week, I think it's been a week at any rate, and I was quite busy this last week with another project, but excuses aside, here is where we're at. So as you can see, first off, here is what we ended up with on the second version. There's the spring right there. Uh, this is my lighter wire spring. I tried using the heavier one because why not? And as it turns out, one of those things I'm still figuring out on that one, what the minimum idea is before it just kind of stops working. <laughs> and the seven millimeter, seven millimeter idea that we were going for here obviously didn't work. I had this on a five millimeter rod is what I turned this on. Again, I don't have an automatic uh, spring winder set up right at the moment because I was working on a new version and never finished it. So I've been doing these by hand. And anyway, five millimeter spring popped this out to just about seven millimeters, which worked, or seven, five millimeter rod rather, popped this right out to about seven millimeters, which is what we were shooting for on the OD of the spring. So that's sized about correctly. And otherwise, what you may notice is that the lever arm is not exactly what we designed last time. So, um, I guess actually I'll start off with how exactly in my opinions of this it is working obviously so I can at least give opinions on version 1 versus version 2 now I do like the spring how the spring feels compared to the rubber band the rubber band gets really tight really quickly uh, one of those things I don't actually think that's a matter of tensioning we did put the tension the option to tension it down here but I don't actually know that I can tension this back any further because at the lowest point, it's really not bad. It's just that it ramps up pretty hard towards the top, which I'm not a huge fan of. Whereas obviously the spring is a bit more linear. Now this, I'm 99% sure that it's a matter of me using the M4 bolt, threaded bolt, instead of a rod as instead of, or actually, is this an M4? Yeah, yeah, this is M4. Uh, instead of a rod, uh, I'm getting a lot of chatter as I move this up. It just is really crunchy, and I'm pretty sure that's just a matter of stuff in between the plastic and the spring just rattling against the threaded rod. So if this was smooth, it would probably run a lot smoother. Otherwise, one very important thing I came to realize as I was doing redesigns, which we'll get to in just a second, is that as much as I disliked how this looked back here, this being the original version, it actually makes a bit of sense. And it makes a bit of sense because if you imagine this in a panel, you know, imagine I've got a panel enclosing this, then that actually is a lot of dead space that's not getting used. Whereas down here underneath, which is where we moved the micro switch to, might actually have some uses. You might actually have something mounted against the wall and the inside wall down here. So, the fact that this is area inside of the box that, you know, this would in theory be contained in that is probably not being used actually suggests that this was a better design to work at, to start off with. Again, I didn't really like it because I looked at the fact that a, we added extra material up here. As you can notice, this one is a good bit shorter than this one. So we added extra material at the top, which I didn't particularly like, which is why I wanted to change the design. And this whole entire like flagpole design where it's just kind of free floating out in space, I wasn't particularly a fan of, but frankly, it's solid enough. It's not really going anywhere. So it's not actually that, but that much of a problem. So honestly, what I may end up doing in the long run is taking the spring and redesigning this so that we have this positioning for the micro switch, but with the spring instead of the rubber band is probably what we're going to end up with. And that is my takeaway on this whole entire little experiment between two different designs on how to get this mounted. Again, this guy down here, this is space that actually could potentially be used for something else, whereas this was nothing. So this maybe was a mistake. It also, as we're about to get to, ran into a few different design problems. So let's get to those. So this was the first design, which we did on stream. Okay, here's our little lever arm. And this goes up and down, right? Now, where this is at right now, this actually worked decently well. Uh, the problem is, is I went to put it together and as you can see here, we ran into this problem again where 
the lever arm, the long lever arm on my mark switches, is running into the wall here. It actually doesn't fit terribly well like this. So, I said, okay, no big deal. I moved it much further out this way in front of the micro switch arm. No big deal. And then just in case, I put this little hook right here. You know, it's just a little actuator that will help get me a little extra distance on the push on the micro switch. The problem is, is that the difference between these two is that this one starts out at, uh, let me turn sideways so you can see this. This one starts out th at this angle and this one starts out more like this angle, right? So this angle is a lot shallower than this angle. And therefore, whereas it wasn't as noticeable as the slide slid up and down here, this one is much more noticeable. And that is that it actually wants to go forward. It actually wants to do something of a parabolic or elliptical motion as it's coming down, which is a bit of a problem. Now I did a few different designs and let me see. I know I saved the one a picture of the one. Okay, I didn't save a picture of the other. So let me pull up Fusion to a previous version because I know I saved in between. And I will show you the second one as well. So I think it's this guy. Okay, cool. It is this guy. So my idea back to getting these elliptical motions on was just getting it up and running really quick. All right, so here's the first one I came up with and we'll just go to the, my full desktop view instead of the picture viewer. So this is very simple. Basically, I'm going to have a large circle right here, a large disc, which the uh, slide is going to attach to up here. And then I've got this arm, which spins separately from the, uh, it, it spin is a bit offset. And I was going to have this slotted again so that it can slide up and down. Basically, I was offsetting those two movements. So one of the movements was spinning a round disc, which moves the lever arm. Uh, the movement going in this direction, the horizontal direction of the slide. And then the vertical component of the slide, because the slide goes on an angle right, that lift, that rise in the slide, is taken up, obviously, by the slot in the middle here. That was design number one. I was like, okay, you know, that's, it kind of works. I don't particularly like it, but it will work if I end up extruding this out. But let me try something that looks a bit more interesting because I was really going for more of a cam idea. So I started working that out, started working out on what I needed to get a long path, you know, where it rotates around without, oh, actually, let me pull that other one back up. One second, do 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 do. There's my file structure. So, uh, one problem I was running into is you see this dotted line around the outside. That is my floor. That is how close I can get to the floor. So one of these things, as this rotates, right? I don't actually want it rotating in a linear fashion, fashion like this around the circle. I want it doing again more of a parabolic motion, or otherwise basically dodging the floor as it goes. So that's what I was trying to accomplish over here was I was trying to get an arc put in that would be long enough for the full stroke length of the, uh, what you call it, of the slide, but would still give me that push into the button. Now it's one of these things at this point, I had more or less come to the conclusion that I liked the mounting of the micro switch in version one better so as I was working through with the math and what I needed here on how to position all of this, I basically just decided that, you know what, I don't think I'm going to end up using this design at the end of the day anyway. So let's go ahead and let's just disk chat and let's go to the current design, which you guys have seen, which is this guy. Oh, also I added in pink as a new color because I needed another color. So now we have one more color to play with. And one of these things back to this needs to move this, uh, the difference between this one and version one or two, you know, is that I had the slot going up and down here. Now I've got the slot going on this, on the uh, peg instead, on the actuator instead. And that allows the actual actuator to go up and down as it needs to, as it rotates around. 
So one of the interesting things about this design here, and let me see if I can't find where I put it. I rearranged the timeline because I decided I wanted to have this part designed before I did the base because it's just cleaner that way. Otherwise I'm adding on to the base that's already there after I do the design. But if you look at what I ended up doing here, and I like looking at it from this side instead. Fusion, please. So, uh, first off, instead of going straight from here to there, I decided to offset it a little bit. Um, basically, this gives me a bit of a different angle. Uh, so let's look at this micro switch. At this point, uh, here's my center line on, whoops. Here's the, oh, there it is. There's the center line that I need to be hitting right there, that dot right there, and that little, it's hard to see, but there should be a line in here somewhere. There it is. So there is my construction line right there, which is the micro switch activation point. And as you can see, the nub of the actuator, I just put directly on that line so that the actuator, it's a three millimeter actuator nub, right? It's the three millimeter diameter on there. So if the center of it is on the default position of the micro switch, that means in theory, I'm moving the micro switch back half of the diameter. So that's how I lined it up. So that's lined up right on there. And then I need that angle right there to be something positive because I need the uh, actuator to be pushing backwards. I need it to be levering backwards. I can't really have it just flat straight up and down and trust it to work. I really need it to be swinging backwards towards the micro switch to make sure that actually uh, trips the micro switch and just readjust, readjusting the microphone really quick because it was hunched over again. So I did that. Uh, that's how I got that positioned at first and why I need to offset the pivot point forward because I need the pivot point ahead of this right here. This circle right here is just this mounting point shifted upwards. I just put this line in the middle and then mirrored it forward for the full uh, slide length. So that ensured that I had this going backwards by offsetting the pivot point towards the front like this. The uh, next thing I had to do was I had to basically say, okay, from this point right here to this point right here, that is my actuator. That cannot change. That size has to be exactly the same from this position to that position because that's how physics work. Things don't stretch. At least this type of plastic does not stretch. To be fair, I'm sure there are you know, types of plastic that do stretch and therefore it could change shape. But this type of plastic is not going to stretch, right? So I had to set up that line as being identical to that line. And then from that point, I then had to figure out, okay, what does this distance right here between the nose and that need to be in order to, uh, basically in order to dodge this, uh, what you call it. And it's one of these things, there's a whole bunch of math that could go on here, but per our usual arrangement, I'm not going to do math. The fusion is just going to figure it out itself. Now, the one thing, the one and only thing that I am a bit, I would investigate further if it would actually, if this was a design I was actually going to use is before I added in all the rest of this other stuff, just the uh, body design itself, these crosshairs, these cross sections right here actually locked into place, which suggests that Fusion believes that there is exactly one point that this mounting hole right here in the center can be positioned in order to accommodate both of these positions on the slide, which seems incorrect to me, but I'm not sure what a, but that would obviously uh, be determined by some of my constraints here. And I'm not exactly sure which of my constraints is the one determining that Fusion is saying, okay, because of this constraint that you put in here, this is the exact spot that this mounting hole has to be in order for this slide mechanism to work. So again, that's something that I would look into if I actually thought this was going to be a successful design. But again, the other design is just so much simpler to use and it actually makes sense in terms of practicality it's actually area inside the machine you know the theoretical machine that would be open and available for use so again one of these things i 
it's not something that I'm going to, I feel I need to spend a whole bunch of time on. I just want to point out that evidently the way I did this by setting these two lines exactly uh, equal and then getting these start and end positions, Fusion said there's only one intersect point. And also I have a couple other, again, uh, constraints in here and it would take a bit because there's so many of them to figure out what exactly is the constraint that's causing this lockup right here. But at the end of the day, this design does in fact work. And as you've seen, actually, I don't know if I gave you a good shot of the back of it, but let, so we'll hop back over to the camera one last time. So there you go. It does 100% work. Uh, only actually, this is something I did not mention. The mounting holes in the back here are obviously impossible to get to without removing the micro switch, which is a little bit of a design nightmare. Uh, not even nightmare, but obnoxiousness. I can just move them over to right here. It does. They don't need to be dead center of the device. They could be off on this lip over here, so that they're actually accessible. But that was a bit annoying. Another nice thing. I should also point out is that this can be adjusted out more. You can see I left the long bolt here. I actually went ahead and slid this all the way out so that the tip of this was directly on top of the marker switch. I just decided that, you know, A, it's taking up too much space on this side, and B, the uh, mic switch, uh, the rather the travel distance on this nib is not as far if it's making contact out here on the lever arm. So that's why I put it back out here towards the end of the lever arm. Actually, the third thing I should notice note is that this was not really a big deal to stack this design version one next to each other because as you can see, it's got plenty of clearance on the sides. I did design in this extra space right here and made sure that this distance here was longer than these uh, terminals plus a little bit extra for the connectors, the quick connectors, so that these can be stacked together. However, as you will notice, this distance right here, actually we can call it this distance right here, from this edge right here to this edge over here is a good bit larger than this. So it does not stack up, uh, you can't fit as many in on this design as this design. But again, just to you know, be fair to the designs, this one is a bit taller, so you do need a taller box to use this design. So again, there are trade-offs, but at the end of the day, this does seem to make more sense to me, although I probably would redesign it to use a spring rather than the rubber band. However, that being it, what it is, both since both of them do work, oh, one other thing I should note is I ran out of M5s here. So if you see me at any point here, adjust the uh, screw right here in the tightness. It's because I ran out of M5s. I'm picking up more, but uh, this guy does not have an M5 in it right now, which means that this guy is actually rattling loose as I'm using it. Anyway, point being is that I don't have any reason to throw these guys out, I either one. So I will just use them as is for the time being in the arcade stick. So yeah, that is the wrap up on what has gone down with the sliders. Honestly, again, two successful designs. I'm happy they worked out. It would have been interesting again to have more of a cam design where uh, to actuate this button, but again, completely unnecessary. This works perfectly well like this. So um, yeah, that would be everything there. So let's hop back into Fusion and let's get started working on this throttle the throttle input digital throttle input that we were talking about so uh my idea on this actually uh one of those things me being bad at my job get out of my edible documents go back to the arcade stick did i save it up here yeah i pinned it cool and component base should have had this set up ahead of time but i was excited to get streaming after a week of not having an opportunity to stream yeah i mean that was pretty rough this week. It's one of these things where I was going to bed at after 12 and then waking up at 5. I was just like, uh, let this week be over. I want to get back to streaming. So, um, pity stories aside, let us go ahead and consider, it's one of those things the, well, no, I normally do try to, I was going to say, I can always move the component base afterwards, but I do try to uh, keep the component base at origin. So we will go ahead and start here. 
And let's see. Actually, I don't want to do it this way, I don't think. I think I want to do the turn knob first. And now that I'm doing all this talking, let me go ahead and sketch out what I'm looking to do, what was in my head for how to put this together. So grabbing the paper and figure out where my pen went. There it is. Do, do, do. And back to camera. And grab a quick sip of coffee. Okie dokies. So, uh, on this design, what I'm thinking, this is the general shape, right? Because we're doing a sidewind throttle kind of thing is what I was thinking. I believe that's what I decided because this is more of a, oh no, I did say motorcycle throttle. So we can do this. Okay, that actually, in that case, if we do this way, so I was actually between two designs, actually. Uh, this design right here, uh, I shouldn't draw it like that, ignore that. So let me get a little bit closer to the camera. I had this design was the one design I was thinking about before we actually, before I started talking to myself on stream, where you kind of have this cone on this uh, half handlebar, let's say, and you turn the cone so around there, you know, around the uh, center shaft here. And the way I was looking at doing that was having this be a two piece cone that has a, if I do a bisection of this, so imagine this is a bisection of the cone. This is the inside of the cone. I've got a through bolt right here. And then I've got these little lips, which interconnect with uh, this outside shaft. I've done this before on this other project that I've been putting off and having gone to. You can see how I split this in half. And it is on this bottom piece, like it, same exact way as this. It's got this lip running all the way around it, which this then pieces onto. So I know this design, I know this design works, but we were saying with the, uh, motorcycle input potentially um let's see doo, 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 doo. yeah so back to as i was saying i believe in the other stream this kind of feels more like a digging motion to me than grabbing the side of this cone and tweaking it it's just a matter of this feels more like a digital input getting that to a point and clicking it in whereas this feels more like in uh, analog input but I said okay at least it's not an airplane or boat analog input which would definitely feel like more like of an analog input was the design I was talking uh, the trade-off I was talking about so just so that we're on the same page here is what I want to avoid is this style of throttle from a boat or an airplane you know where you got the handle up here and then the pivot point down here and you go forward. I mean, that's interesting. That may end up on the arcade prototype rig eventually, but that's not what we're designing right now. Again, this design, yeah, maybe instead of this cone thing, I just because the cone thing, even though it makes more sense as a digital input to me in terms of feel, uh, it's not very... It doesn't really get into the idea of digging down into the dirt, which again was, we're trying to be thematic here. Um, let's see. Doo, doo, doo. I'm just trying to think whether or not. I'm actually now thinking what I'm thinking in my head, and this is going to be a side view, but. I'm actually half thinking of maybe something like this. So yeah, this looks a little bit like our, this guy, yeah. I know it looks a little bit like that guy, but this would be, whoops, that is not my pen. That is my screwdriver. This would be a lot flatter. This would be a lot flatter plate. This would be the other option is just to have 
a through line here and then swing down there and then the micro switch back here and again have this centered the exact same way we do the joystick with the spring down the bottom here so this is an idea but i don't think i actually like this as much it's just something that popped into my head just now so i think we will go with whoops doink 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 and then that right there so the full on motorcycle atv whatever you want to call it uh quad i guess rather than atv throttle do 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 yeah between these two this just plain for what it's doing i don't really think it i don't really think it works i think it needs to be this guy so as much as i prefer this guy frankly just because this feels like more of a digital input we will stick with this guy so let us get hat, uh, go ahead and get that designed. Do do do. And also, we don't have to do. I should say, uh, because we're doing it this way, we actually don't need to do a two-piece design here. There's no reason to, because we're sheathing over top this part here now instead. Whereas this was kind of attached on the edge, it wasn't really sheathing on. So, uh, therefore, there's no real need to do a two-part design here. We'll just go ahead and do the outer shell, the inner shell, and then run a through bolt through it and just use the bolt to keep this from sliding off that way. So, 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 so. Uh, the only interesting thing that's gonna end up with this design, which I am going to have to figure out as we go here, is how we're actuating, or what method I should say, we wanna use to actuate the micro switch inside. And, it, and that really comes down to um, how much extra space we want because it's one of those things to handle itself is going to be fairly straightforward. So it's a matter of how much extra bolt we bulk we want to put on the end. Because we could just have the micro switch sitting off on the end over here, and then the uh, it getting tripped by an extra little piece inside of a box, basically on this side, is the simplest way to go about it. So. I'm just trying to figure out because the next question is how to position this over top the extrusion. Um, because, and I know I'm bouncing back and forth here on the camera a lot, but it's just quicker. So we've got our stick right here. I'm just going to draw a line for the stick for right now. Either it comes down and attaches to the extrusion like this, or we do something like this where we wrap back around and get it centered on the stick. So the stick is up here and the mount to the extrusion is centered on the stick. Uh, this is one of those things. It depends largely, it depends two things. One, how big I wanna make this because that will stiffen up this arm a lot. So if I wanna make this a bit bigger, again, because we're putting the micro switch in here, let's say, then it's not that big of a deal to have this much overhang right here. Otherwise, I could... Uh, it's a little tricky. Again, how we want to actuate the micro switch. Because in theory, the micro switch could be anywhere here if we really wanted to. If we want to go this path. And then we could just make a mechanism to trip it. Regardless of where it is. And this being dead set over top of it. Uh... It helps a little bit. It's one of those things. Now you're, you still have this lever point technically to some degree, but that lever point is offset by the fact that you're going down here rather than going down over here on this lever arm. So, mm, which one, which one? Part of me is inclined to keep it simple stupid just so that we don't run into a situation where let's see all right I, I guess here's the other thing is reusability because let's face it i don't necessarily i mean if we can reuse this input for other games then that would be good 
this is less natural than that looking. I mean, it makes sense. It's like, I, if I saw it, I wouldn't go, oh, that looks stupid. I would say, okay, I understand why it's designed like this. Uh, but if, again, this looks like half of a handlebar, you know, the center of the handlebar is on this side, right? So if this looks like half of a handlebar, then we actually want it to look like half a handlebar. And the other thing that can happen is we can print another one of these and just mirror it. And we just change the orientation of the micro switch and the spring to match. And by orientation, I mean, I believe I'd have to wind that spring left hand instead of right hand. Or actually, which hand am I winding the spring in this case? So it's going this way. So that is left hand. Yeah. Okay. So if, if this is an input on my left hand, which is the plan, because my right hand is going to be joystick for the setup. So my right hand is going to be joystick. This hand is going to be inputs. So if this is my left hand, the spring is charging in this direction. We're charging the spring going forward, which means that that's a left hand wound spring. So this spring would be left hand round. That, if it was on this hand, we'd be charging this way. So if we follow the, actually, let me, it's one of those things because of the camera angle, it's a little difficult to demonstrate, I think. But uh, when you got a spring, just for the record, because I don't think we've gone over this before and it's not necessarily something you might, uh, might be able to figure out on your own, which is left and which is right. But if I, uh, I'll, I was going to just draw over our drawings, but I guess I won't make a uh, mess of our drawings for sentimental value. So here's my spring, right? Figure out handedness of a spring. You just follow the uh, tail of the spring. So this is the inside. I mean, I guess I'm a little, because I drew this offset, <laughs> offset this is a little uh, difficult to recognize, but normally you wouldn't see this part, right? So normally, uh, let's see if I can turn this into a, not, eh, not really. Well, I can do this, right? I can do this and then, no, I can't. Okay, so I drew this a bit off. Normally you wouldn't be able to see the inside of the spring. A spring normally, if you're looking at it straight on, you can only see the very tail end, so you can only see the tail. But just find the tail, okay? And follow the tail with your thumb. So if the tail is, if you're following the tail with your right hand with your thumb, then that's right-handed. If you're following the tail, and this is how a spring normally would look, as you're looking at it straight on, I'll de-dent this a little bit just to uh, make a make it visually stand out. But in this situation, we're following the tail with our left hand now. Our left thumb is following the tail. So this is the left hand wound spring. Makes sense. And obviously, if I take this left hand wound spring, I want the tail to keep on wrapping around and forming more coils is how a, ting, uh, a spring tensions. It creates more coils on itself as it wraps around, as it charges. So this spring has to turn in this direction. If it turned this way, it would be losing coils and it would begin unwinding itself. And that's bad. You don't want to do that. Uh, so, I mean, it's one of these things. I mean, I'm sure there are mechanisms out there that use the fact that the spring wants to spring back to its natural state. The other way, normally you use band springs for that, uh, like clock springs, okay, which are flat bands that want to, they're flat bands that quill around like this. They're the ones that spiral in on the edge, right? So they spiral towards the center. And normally you'd use those guys to flip flop back and forth, at least as far as I'm aware. It's one of those things. I'm not strictly a spring expert. I've just done a good bit of work because of work with springs, but Again, not a spring expert, but normally you'd use a band spring, a, uh, again, a, a clock spring, I guess is the other thing you would call it, for that instead. If you wanted it to flip-flop back and forth between unwinding and winding. At least as far as I understand it, again. Not an expert, not strictly an expert, not technically my uh, field. But point being point being and I just said that we're winding this way which is a left hand wound yeah okay so we're gonna need a left hand wound for this just to 
remind myself. And now we can come back here. Left hand torsion spring. And I, again, this uh, extrusion. Uh, where do I want to put the center point of this? So I already said that we're doing the half handlebars instead of the wrap around to get us centered underneath the mechanism. Uh, but that doesn't necessarily tell me where the center of the drawing design is. I think I am going to keep it center of the handlebars. So I think the uh, rotary part, the handle, will stick out from the center here. So let us get to drawing. And actually, better question. Ah, you know what? All right. I will realign the mechanism later. That is going to be my solution here. So I'm going to go ahead and draw it here and then we'll slide it uh, right or left. Yeah, we'll slide it left to accommodate the micro switch component. And let's do this. Let us grab a projection here. Ah, we don't really need a projection. Again, we're realigning this. So I'll just take origin here as my center point on my spring. Or not my spring, my uh, handle. And I think I want to do the, whoops, did I accidentally delete that horizontal? What I was trying to do was make this construction is what I actually want to do. Uh, let's see, all right, for dimensions. So I'm gonna do the outside shell first on the handle. And I think two inches looking at my hand is probably about right on that guy, so 50 millimeters. So that will be the outside shell that we're grabbing. And then lengthwise, I think I'm going to go to the full. So, hmm. It's looking on my hand like. So my hand f barely fits four inches ish for a good grip on this. Like, that would be acceptable f to me. But I probably want to leave a little extra room, so we'll go the extra inch-ish for 125. So we will go ahead and extrude this out. And I actually want to go in the opposite direction, so minus 125. And let me actually come in here just in case. We will go ahead and parameterize this. Parameterize. Handle length. Uh, handle grip length is what I should call it. Handle grip length is 125. Okie dokies. And then from the, oh, shoot me. Darn, all right. We're gonna have to put that back. Handle, this should be a new component is the problem. That was a bit of a derp on my part. So, minus 125 and new component. Okie dokies. There we go. Now we're just going to put a flange on the outside to give ourselves something to butt up against. Whether or not we put a flange on the inside is actually questionable. I don't think we will. Just because on this side towards the handlebar. Just because I, A, I don't expect your hand to be slipping left and right to begin with. So this is only really just a referencing point on the left hand side. And B... Uh, so my, my B was that if you're stupid enough to run your fingers into the handlebars, that's on you was actually my B, but meh, 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 meh. Yeah, that's probably just me being obnoxious. Yeah, I guess we'll go ahead and put a flange on the other side too. And for this, I'm going to go ahead and loft it just because we're going to be 3d printing this. So if I'm going three millimeters up, let me just do a quick little bit of math, rough math. So if this is 45 and this is three millimeters, then actually I don't do math on stream. So let's pull up a triangle calculator. Uh, actually, 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 let's do this the way I've shown you guys how to do this a couple times rather than do it that way. We have this centered so we can come here, intersect this and do this doop 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 so instead of lofting we'll go ahead and revolve it grab the center point 
go to center point on oh that is an intersect so I do not have a center point on that that makes sense now I do make that a right angle and now I can go ahead and actually this is not the correct angle I want I want this guy right here 45 okay you're really gonna do this to me there we go please all right that to that and I want this about three millimeters there we go and that because this is a revolve I actually need to I was going to leave that as a construction line as because it's just a reference but because it's a revolve I actually can only extrude half of this circle at a time because of how re revolve works it needs to be it needs to not intersect the axis is the problem so and that is how we'll do that so now we know we have a 45 angle here so when we print this if we need to print this well basically I'm going to be mirroring this onto the other side because I decided to put a flange on each side which means that one of these two sides is going to be printed on the uh, floating it's going to be printed above the fl uh, bed and therefore the overhang needs to be mild enough so that it doesn't look horrible which is why we did that so let us go ahead and get this revolved and resolved our axis is going to be that guy and 360 degrees is correct so there we go there's that flange on that side uh, one of these things I could make that a bit bigger three millimeters is kind of tame it visually is probably not even going to be that noticeable so let's maybe go up to six millimeters that way it really stands out on the handle and now we'll go ahead and mirror that across features that guy and actually because we're not on center anymore I'm used to working off center but we no longer have center so let's get that and this is the X mid plane whoops I accidentally clicked off there we go and come back here and mirror that that okay we'll leave it on just for the moment it appears to be working so uh, next thing we can do is we'll go ahead and use the shell because I don't particularly care uh, all right um do, 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 do. the sh so this is me stopping because the shell actually is going to shell the flange too which I didn't actually want so you can see it uh, it shells the flange as well I didn't really want that I'm trying to decide whether or not that's big of a problem because this is the simpler or this is one of two simple ways of doing it the other simple way of doing it is coming back here let me turn this to handle handle coming up here and coming back to our drawing and then just putting the offset in the wall thickness uh, do I want this a bit thicker just because we are nah I, I we don't need it a bit thicker eh, you know what we will we will we will uh, do, 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 do. all right you know what this is feeling a little silly right now since we're realigning this anyway so I'm just going to coincident on uh, what you call it and cry about it later on origin and cry about it later and just for the record you'll notice how much bigger the handle is than the extrusion that it looks funny but it's one of those things I don't think it's gonna be that big of a deal when we finally print it out and we'll see what happens though that's something uh, be interesting to find out so anyway since we're realigning this that is not that and not that drawing where is my other sketch there we go all right so yeah and this is the other way of doing it which is just to grab this profile uh, we will want uh, now nah, I'll do it from object with an offset is how I'll do it and I want a three uh, four millimeter wall I decided right and this will be minus four millimeters because we're going in the opposite direction and distance all so there we go this is the other way to do it and this is the look I wanted I wanted this uh, flange to be solid all the way around and just have this tubular section right here 
And that is the handle done. Now, a couple things to mention. I believe handles are actually, uh, this is flat right now, right? I believe handles are normally actually, uh, what do you call it? What is that shape? Uh, it bulges in the center. I'm trying to think of how you normally des <laughs> to describe that shape and I'm just blanking on it. But normally I believe handles have a bulge in the center, a slight bulge in the center, they get larger in the center. Uh, there's a couple things we can do right now. We can, uh, let's see. Well, the, the first question is whether or not we really need that, which we may not. Uh, let me look at my hand really quick. All right, you know what? I've decided I kind of want it. So, um, hmm. <laughs> All right. That's annoying. Okay. I, it's annoying, but it is what it is. We are going to come back here and we're going to redesign this from... Uh, bah, 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 bah. So there's two ways to do this. And basically... All right, the easier way to do this is to make it bigger on in the middle rather than smaller. That's the easier of the multiple ways to do this. That's the easiest of the multiple ways to do this. And then we're going to take the intersect and we'll do that before we do all this is what we'll do. All right, again, this is the easiest of all the ways to do it. So this is the way we'll do it. I'll take this X mid plane. I'm going to go ahead and project out this guy and then I'll go ahead and use that as my reference okay instead of so basically in other words the I'm going to go wall thickness larger here is what I'm gonna do so we're going to go ahead and actually uh bu -bu 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 -bu. let me actually do this instead try to click that there we go I'm going to try this out. Okay. I'm going to go wall thickness larger. So that's eight extra millimeters on the diameter, which is maybe a little bit much. That's over a quarter inch larger in the center on the diameter, but we'll see how it works out. Uh, what I'm going to do here. Oh, whoopsies. Was not paying attention. Assumed I was still inside the handle. I was not still inside the handle. So let's really quick do that again. Just takes half a second, four millimeters. Turn this off, body, turn that sketch off. Four millimeters. And I wanna make sure that's not interfering with my loft here. So, I actually don't know if I'm gonna to need to add in the extra sketch line or not. Let's find out. Okay, it's not looking like it. There, there, and there. Okay, cool. And now what I was going to do is hit the intersect button. Uh, I guess intersect is not going to work, is it? No, intersect is not going to work. Yep, okay. Uh, that's okay, though, because we can just hit join. Okay, so I was thinking intersect when I was thinking of making it smaller, is what I was thinking originally. And then I got silly and did not readjust my thinking when we got larger. So now we'll go to join instead. There you go. There's our loft and now we can go ahead and all the rest of this should fit just fine because the ends did not change. The ends were still at our default size. So there we are. And uh, in the center here, I should mention the center, we did not also loft our cut on the inside here. This is uh, this size. This is what do we call it? 50 millimeters. Yeah, 50 millimeters minus eight millimeters of wall distance. So 42 millimeters. So this is a 42 millimeter diameter all the way through, which means that we have more wall thickness in the center. It just means more plastic. And it's only, frankly, only by a little bit. It probably doesn't make that much of a difference to us in terms of cost, which, you know, let's face it. If we were worried about cost, we wouldn't be doing this, but you know, we're not going to talk about that right now. 
So let me go ahead and put now the retaining bolt in here. Get that in, even though we don't have anything to attach it just yet to, we can. Uh, actually, this is okay. Uh, okay, we can make this work. Uh, this is a little bit awkward, but. Okay, this is one of those things where. We actually don't want a bolt, we want a pin. We want to pin it. Okay, how do we want to go about this? The problem with the bolt is that we're constantly rocking this back and forth, which gives it opportunity to loosen up over time. Which is not something we've worried about in a large number of our designs. We've actually done a couple designs where I've mentioned this. This one, however, I think is probably a good idea not to do that. Uh, so our options are pinning or clipping is our two options uh, Aside from the other option which is splitting this in half and doing like I was talking about before and Using bolts coming from the sides here To hold it together onto the thing. That's the third way. That's a groove. So that's like tongue and groove style Is I guess the other way I would describe it So of those methods that I just listed unless I can think of any other methods, which one do we prefer? Um, and if I am going to pin it, what am I pinning it with? Do, 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 do. Do, 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 Let's see. All right. Um, hmm. So I am hesitant, the, the easiest way actually, I think, is to do a clip, and it doesn't necessarily need to be a traditional clip, it could be a uh, kind of socket and ball, a ball and socket style clip, which would probably be easier. The only reason I'm hesitating is because I don't really trust the plastic as much, but at the same time, I'm probably never taking this back apart. I'm just concerned about uh, repetitive flexing of the joints on the clip. But again, if I'm never really going to take this apart, that's probably a silly concern. So in that case, do do do. Eh. See, now that I've gone and said that, now I'm thinking about hollowing out this entire end and actually clipping it all the way through with the piece that with the uh, center shaft is what I'm thinking. It probably, yeah, probably overly ambitious. Probably overly ambitious. The third thing I'm thinking now, let's see, is whether or not we need the center shaft, which we do. I'm pretty sure we do. I just wanted to question myself on it just in case, because if we got rid of the center shaft, then if I just throw a, if I just grab one of those eight millimeters, five sixteenth rods that I've got sitting around and throw that all the way through, uh, that is long enough to reach all the way through. The problem with the bolt is that I don't have 125 plus millimeter bolts sitting around. Uh, well, I know the problem with the bolt was that it unwinds. I take that back because it doesn't need to be a hundred. Well, all right. I guess I'm mixing up two thoughts here. My second thought was if I took a bolt and ran it all the way through to the other end and then turned the bolt into a pin and basically just put a hole in the bolt and then ran a, a cotter pin through it or, you know, any kind of pinning material, a piece of spring, you know, 
That would be the other option. But I do think we want the center handle in here. So let me go ahead and put this on pause really quick. Let's get the rest of this designed while I decide how exactly to ruin my life here. And let us go ahead and design project grab this do 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 that is the center of our hole turn this back on this is going to be hollow again and this is going to be four millimeters again so there's that and then we can extrude this out uh 120 uh, well we've got no we added the flange on the end so the length of the grip is still 125 so we can still extrude this out 125 eh, plus the flange length i guess for the inside handle do, 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 do. yeah i guess that makes sense and then a little bit extra too just as breathing room so maybe another three so we're looking at 125 plus nine so handle length plus nine plus nine and i may want to come back in here and change that to uh you know actually create the flange length that's an idea new component and then on here so this is the part that goes inside of the handle that will get slid in there again we're going to reassemble everything afterwards and this, uh, do I want this to be part of the vertical shaft or do I want this replaceable without replacing the vertical shaft? I think it's a good idea just in case to have this be replaceable. So I'm going to put a flange on here to bolt it to the center shaft just to be a bit safe. We'll hop in here. Handle shaft. Toss this on the end here. Face of mounting flange. And we'll go ahead and design that really quick. We'll just keep it as a circle to keep things uh, symmetrical, uh, similar, consistent, all sorts of words. Let's turn this stuff off so that we don't see it. And I'm going to need M3 bolts. Is seems like a good idea to me. Well, uh, but, but, but we're going to be mounting to the what you call it with M4s, but nah, we'll still use M3s. So M3s, 5.45 head, 5.45. And I'm going to go ahead and draw a center line for these guys. And we'll have a reference, just our origin reference. And Fusion did the double line thing again. Nice. Good job, Fusion. Uh, you were supposed to connect to that. Are you now connected to that? Yes, you are. Good. And then we can circle that around. So that is that. And then we just need to add in a little bit of offset. Some wall thickness so that we don't get too close to the edge. And we'll use that to determine the outside angle as usual, the outside edge as usual. Three millimeters is probably more than enough here. So we'll do that. And actually I take this back. I actually should also body extrude that part too. So let's turn that into a construction line. Uh, try to turn that into a construction line. There we go. And now we'll do three millimeters. And I am doing everything because again, we're going to be circular pat uh, circular patterning it. There we go. Words. There is that. And actually, uh, mm, okay. So I left myself three millimeters of breathing room, which is enough for the bolt heads otherwise we might need to make this you know about four um, millimeters here to give ourselves a two millimeter wall underneath the bolt head and then two millimeters for the bolt head to recess but because we 
gave ourselves three millimeters on the inside here. The bolt head should not be scraping against the handle. Should not, in theory. So we're fine. And in that case, this extra ring right here for the bolt head, that was my original intent was to countersink the bolt head. But at this point, that extra ring is not necessary because we'll just have the bolt head. Ah, I, all right, I take it back. I don't like having the bolt head ex <laughs> exposed. Uh, so actually, I'm going to go five just because I want to have a bit of meat here. So there's five. And then we'll go down two for the bolt head. And then we will circle our pattern that. Circular pattern. Features. Those two guys. And uh, let me turn off the sketch just so that I'm using the face of this instead. And I was going to go four, but I don't have a good reason why we need four. So actually, I think I will keep it at three. So there we go. That can go ahead and mount now to the vertical section. And at what point do we want to figure out the spring situation? The spring situation is something I have not addressed yet. Um, do, 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 do. So the uh, fact of the matter is, is my plan actually was, let me go ahead and bring this guy back up and we'll hop up top so you can see both of them. My plan actually, I was considering putting the spring on the outside here and doing it that way. Uh, with the, well, we gave ourselves three millimeters, so I can actually still do that. Basically that makes my life a lot easier, uh, because it's easier to get to the spring where we're at right now. If I don't put it on the outside of the shaft right here, if it's on the inside of the shaft, then you can imagine how that might be a little bit obnoxious for me to get the spring in here, which I'd like to avoid. It is a large spring, I gotta say that. I have not made a spring two inches in diameter yet. So that will be this will be an interesting experience if I do decide to do that. The other question is, is that it's a torsion spring, it's gonna get smaller as I torsion it. So that actually makes it less ideal for the outside of the shaft because um, I forget, shoot, I'm blanking on how you determine the shrink rate on the torsion spring. I'd have to double check my notes. I have this written down somewhere for work. It normally doesn't come up. It's normally not an issue for us at work. I just have it written down just in case. But uh, as you torsion a spring, its ID gets smaller. Um, and I can't remember how to calculate that off the top of my head. So it's one of these things where the spring that I need might be as big as this flange, which is pretty obnoxious looking if you're looking in on the outside. So what I'm getting at here is that it may have to go on the inside. All right, let, um, there is a lot of stuff. I mean, I got this mounting thing here going on and the spring going on that I said that I'm going to ponder as we move forward, but I haven't put any thought into a mounting situation yet. So I'm kind of just kicking the can down the road. So let us see. Get a little bit of hydration. All right. So right um, and now, okay, never mind. Bad idea, bad idea. Mm-hmm. Okay, this is what we can do, I think. I hope we have enough space to do this. Okay, 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 okay. I am going to take this end and we are going to build inside this end. So, let me go ahead and where is my plane? All right, I'm gonna get a plane for the front side here instead of using the origin. Uh, control Z though, I want to get inside the handle shaft object first. 
component. All right, so fronts end of handle shaft, well, shift shaft, shift fat. All right, there's that. So I'm going to, yeah, this is gonna get kind of messy, but we'll deal with it, okay. Hmm. Okay, this is funny. I'm imagining, how was I doing it before that I got left hand? Oh, I had the other tail attached. That's why I had left hand. All right. Now I'm looking at it from this direction. If I spin it around, okay, and mount it this way. Now I'm looking at a right hand tail is what I was just visualizing in my head. So, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. actually, you know what? Okay, 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 okay. Um, this is only a little bit crazy. It's actually not that crazy. I don't think. I don't think it's that crazy. Uh, at this point, so my idea. Uh, let, let's get my idea put in here really quick. So I am going to. My idea was I'm trying to figure out. So I was going to hollow this wall out a little bit just to give myself extra room to work with. I don't know that's necessary. So I'm going to go ahead and just start. Let's do this. So let me. This is theoretical. This is just going to be a three, theoretical three millimeter right here. And then let's call it a theoretical three. These may not actually come to exist, but I just want them there to be referenced off of so I don't have to redesign it later but in theory if I had to put a bolt in here okay it didn't look like it was centered to me but evidently it is in theory if I needed to put a bolt in there that's where the bolt would be and then that would make my three billion wall on the outside so this then ends up being my shaft um, and I'm going to put uh, Okay, 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 okay. I'm gonna put the spring in here is the idea. The idea is to put the spring in here. And the idea, the bigger idea, is that the spring can retain the handle on the sleeve, on the shaft. The spring itself actually can act as an extension spring. The torsion spring can act as an extension spring. And uh, pull the handle onto the shaft is my idea especially because we're going to need to pre-stretch it a little bit in order to make sure that it has enough uh, space to add its turns on so I mean just for reference uh, uh, bu -bu 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 -bu, do I got any springs around here All right, I do not appear to have any extra springs floating around, so actually, you know what? Whoops. Let me break stuff first, and then we're going to do something fun live on stream. We're going to go ahead and make a spring live on stream for fun. Get my water bottle out of the way. Oops. I just got this new uh, screwdriver, driver, electric driver. So this will be a fun first test. Uh, this is the five millimeter rod that I had spoken to you about before that I used to make the spring on this guy. So we are going to go ahead and make it spring by hand on a drill just so that I have a reference to explain to you. And again, since this is a brand new drill, 
Uh, I'm hoping that it works as well as my other one. Again, my other one was massive. Like, you would not be able to fit it into the shot right now. <laughs> and yes, I was using that other drill to drill out the uh, holes for the PCB for the RGB. Uh, what you call it? Well, and other projects, but that's the one you guys know about. So I did use it on very, very small holes and small pieces. All right, do do unwind you a little bit. All right, and are you in there properly? You feel like you're in there properly. All right, time to do a spring by hand on a drill for fun and education. Whoops, that is the wrong direction. So I'm gonna start, actually we're doing a tension spring, so I actually can, I started to do a regular compression spring, but a uh, torsion spring, you normally don't put pre-spacing in. Uh, you don't necessarily need to. So the reason I would not put pre-spacing into a torsion spring in this situation is because we want it to retain the handle. So the fact that it has these gaps between the coils, I'll give you a better shot, a better look at it in just a second. Let me get this cut. I'll cut it around about there. Cool. So, get you off. There we go. So you can put pre-spacing between the coils in a torsion spring because you know that it's going to torsion and it's going to need it's going to sh uh, need more space that's the reason but a lot of times and in our situation we wouldn't we want it to be as dense as possible because we don't want it to, because we want it when it expands when it's pulled uh, when it's pre-stretched when it's pre-stretched we want it pulling the handle back in but anyway here is our and I'll go ahead and trim the end here a little bit here is our torsion spring example. So the torsion spring, first thing to note, is as I torsion it, as I mentioned before, and it may be a little bit difficult in this situation to see. Um, let me see if I have a block of foam or something like that to make this easier on my hands. And to give myself a little bit of leverage. Do I have a block of foam? I do not, so let me grab, do, 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 do. I got a couple of random plastic pieces here that might fit. Yeah, cool. Bend that and let's see. Uh, trying to find something small enough that it doesn't get in the way too much from you see and I guess this is the best I got right now this is the uh, whoops yeah that's fine this is the button from the controller so I'm just gonna really quick crimp this all right let's see how well this works to do and now that is I'm gonna need to wrap you all around aren't I do, 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 do. all right now we should work yeah now we should work all right cool so first thing to note is as I torsion this you'll see that it, the ID gets smaller which I described to you earlier so there is a visual uh, representation the next thing is that as I twist this, if you count the coils, so let me back up. So I've got this end face up right now, right? So I'm gonna bring that end back face up, or actually to start off with, I ended up with just randomly doing this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coils. I ended up with seven coils. If I, whoops. If I wrap this back around, all right, so we've put one turn on this spring, whoops, and it does not have a shaft on it, so it wants to buckle. But if I count this right now, now I got four, five, six, seven, eight now. I have eight to the edge, so I put a turn on, I got an extra coil. 
So, it's funny, in the preview, it does not look as good as my other window, so I'm going to assume that you can see it well enough. So, every turn you put on, as an extra coil, the material has to come from somewhere, and therefore, if I'm adding extra, if I'm adding extra coil, that extra material has to come from the other ones. That's the reason why it shrinks, because obviously the other one's got to get smaller to give more of their diameter length to the new coil. Uh, the other thing that happens is if I have these all pressed together and I add another, that is if I have seven coils here and I press them all together, that is seven times the diameter of the wire, which is 0.2, let me double check really quick, 0.02 inch, uh, 0.559 millimeter. So 0.5, let's just say, so 0.5 times seven coils would be 3.5 in theory, assuming that I can do math on stream. So in theory, this is 3.5 millimeters if I punch them all together. If I add an extra coil, we are now up to four millimeters. So it gets longer as we turn it. If it is stretched, then, it, well, basically it gets stretched and then the ends are held in place. Okay, if it is stretched and the ends are, ends are held in place, then it cannot get longer, right? Because I'm making sure that the maximum length of the spring is already set. And what that means is that it gets smaller at a much quicker rate I believe I'm pretty sure it gets smaller at a much quicker point rate because that makes sense. And that eighth coil gets put into the same amount of space. So if these are my fixed ends, if I got seven coils, I think that's seven right there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, that's six. All right. For sake of argument, I got six coils here. If I add two more coils to this uh fixed amount of space, now I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Right, so you can see how it gets a lot tighter in there. So you stretch it out in order to accommodate the extra turns. Otherwise, the extra turns, if I start out here with my seven, okay, all bunched together like that, and I add an extra turn, then that actually moves this out. So now I have, you know, if that's seven, then I have eight here, then this moves this end out. Whoops, that was not on stream. There we go. So this top one, I had seven, I added an extra turn, which means that this end needs to go outwards, assuming this end can't move. Uh, otherwise, what happens if you do not accommodate for that is the coils actually end up bunching over top of each other. So they get all jammed up in here. So this is my seven, right? And then the eighth one tries to get on and all of a sudden, it, not necessarily the eighth one, but all the coils start pushing up against each other they get compressed, they get pushed together, and they end up snaking and wrapping up around each other and destroying themselves. Basically, it's the long story short. So that is why the amount of space in here is important. Again, uh, for this situation, if I want this spring to keep the handle on there to be pulling myself back in, and honestly, this spring, frankly, is not feeling particularly resistant to that so the springs that we work at with work are much larger okay so they will want to you actually got to put a come along on them and yank them out basically to stretch them unless they're pre-stretched again but we don't want pre-stretched because we want them to be yanking back on us in order to keep the handle assuming this is the handle and this is the handle shaft in order to keep those pulling back in the point of that tangent is I may need to go up to my larger wire, which I realized. So basically, I made a mistake a few, actually it may have been a month ago at this point, the last time I was using the wire. You wanna make sure that this end stays secured. On my larger wire, unfortunately, it ended up kicking when I cut it and I got a bit of a tangle so I tried to get it fixed inside the box and then decided it needed to come out of the box to fix it. And it is still not fixed. <laughs> I frankly, what I'm probably going to need to do is I'm probably going to need to take this whole entire coil apart, just lay it out and then rewind it. It's probably what I'm going to need to do. It's only a problem if I put the automatic winder back together or, you know, finish the new automatic winder. So if I do the new, and the only reason, sorry, I jumped ahead of myself there. The reason it's a problem is because if the automatic winder is pulling this and then it hits a kink and gets stuck, that is a problem. 
So that is why you need your coil to be cleanly uh, coiled around here. It's the same thing as a 3D printer, you know, a 3D printer, if you get your uh, filament kinked up like this because it snaps back and gets lost, the end gets lost inside, it's eventually going to snag and you're eventually going to end up not printing anything. Unfortunately, it's a bit worth worse when you're yanking uh, spring around a dowel, let's say, because all of a sudden now you're pulling the whole entire thing into the machine and it's just becoming a mess. Whereas with a printer, you just fail a print, which is no big deal. Or, you know, relatively less destructive. Let me put it that way. It may be a big deal if you're doing a large print and it fails at 99%, but it is less destructive than, you know, having a coil get jammed up on a spring turning machine. So that is an overview of springs because I haven't done one of those on stream yet. So that is where we're at and in here. So the question really is how much space I need for this whole entire thing. Uh, one of those things I would have to do math to figure out the minimum spring I need for torsion. I mean, not even minimal spring, but how much torsion I want on the snapback mechanism relative to, again, if I'm going to use this large spring, the amount of tensile strength that large spring has. So I'd have to do a bit of math, which I'm not going to do on stream because it's going to take a while because I actually have to look up the tensile, tensile strength on that guy. Oh, and the other point of that whole entire tangent was I accidentally threw out the box on that stupid spring. So I got to look up my orders again and uh, remember what the diameter is on that spring. Yeah, I mean, I guess I could also use my calipers, but who wants to do that? So, in order to figure any of that out, I got to figure that other stuff out. So, point being is so we're going to do a design here that hopefully should be more than enough. Because if I make this deep enough here, so again, this is going to be, and not again, because I haven't really explained myself here. So if I give myself, let's say, because I don't need this spring particularly strong, I don't need this spring particularly strong, and therefore, let's say it's only about an inch, okay? So I take this shaft and I put a shaft in here that is about minus 25 millimeters. And then I'm gonna put a wall on the backside here. So let me toss this in here. front side of spring wall okay project this stuff out actually I don't even need this little guy do I because we're just doing a wall for right now minus three millimeters uh, that was obviously supposed to be plus three millimeters obviously there we go all right so now I got it I can put a spring in here and I'll go ahead and put a hole in order to feed the spring into. And yeah, we'll go ahead and do that right now. So the tail of the spring will go into this hole right here, which is just arbitrarily put in the middle. And by arbitrarily put in the middle, um, yeah, I guess I just take this all the way up to project that actually, 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 actually that that and intersect that there we go now it's arbitrarily in the middle and again I don't recall I it might be one point uh, no it's actually might be two uh, let me all right you know what uh, grab my phone one second let's see if we can't find this Just a moment. Is this you? All right, 0.037 inches would be how many millimeters or how many fractions of a millimeter? 0.037 and I grabbed the internet instead of a calculator. We would just normally multiply that by 0.2, I mean by 25.4 obviously. But the internet says that that is 
0.9398 millimeters, so about one millimeter. So I will go ahead and make this a one millimeter hole. Again, this is going to have to be, oh shoot. I was gonna say this is gonna have to be drilled out, but my one millimeter drill bit is going to be very, very sad about that. So we are not going to use the one millimeter drill bit. I guess we are going to use, let me look at one of the other ones. I don't want to go all the way up to three millimeters, 100% the three millimeter drill bit would fit here, but I don't want to go that much different from the uh, spring. So I am going into my bag really quick. And all right, that looks long enough. So is this my two millimeter bit? Calipers. Now one of these things I've been meaning to, so that uh, twirling, yeah, this is my two millimeter bit. So two millimeter bit is long enough. The black rotating thing that I showed you at the beginning to demonstrate the tongue and groove rotation mechanism to have steel. Uh, that guy is actually the that project was do I not have 1.5 I guess I don't have 1.5 I guess I only have a two okay that project was uh, actually my drill bit holder I wanted to make a fancy little drill bit holder for my metric drill bits and obviously I have not done that yet which is why it takes me a while to get drill bits so this two millimeter drill bit, however, will work. So we'll make this a two millimeter hole. And we jump through all those hoops just to put a hole, a two millimeter hole in this plate right here. Distance all, okay. All right, so the tail of the spring will go into there and I'll hook it back around. It's gonna be a little awkward to get it in there to get it hooked on there, but uh, I'll figure something out. Yeah, it's gonna be really awkward. Uh, hopefully, because it's a less than one millimeter, uh, because it's less than one millimeter spring, and I've got a two millimeter hole here. Hopefully, I'll be able to just kind of fish hook it into that slot, into that hole. I don't want to make it a full slot or anything like that because I want to minimize the chance that it slips out my other option is to glue it in there uh one of those things hot glue would probably be a bad idea getting a hot glue nozzle into there would probably be a bad idea but i may be one of those things i try to avoid using super glue just because it's permanent but this may be a situation where my, i might want to super glue it in there so that is that so this one end spring goes in there and the other spring end will go into here so I'll go ahead and use the same exact sketch. Doink, distance all, flip it around, bodies to cut, just the handle is good. There we go. So the spring will now come out on this side and it will be sticking out. It's one of those things, it's hopefully small enough. Eh, actually, there's another thing I can do. So when I put the spring through here, so this end, this end, I will be able to stretch and bend. I'll put the spring through the first end. So I'll put the spring through here first and then I will stretch it. Uh, okay, yeah, this is going to be difficult, is it not? Okay, I guess I'm not going to, so. It's gonna be a little bit tricky. This is going to be a little bit of a funny circus act. So the spring is going to have a long tail on this end that sticks out probably about this long. I want it long because I'm going to feed this handle onto here and I'm going to have to get it through this hole right here. I'm going to have to get it through this hole right here. On this end, after I get it through and after I give it a little bit of pre-stretch, so I get it through, I grab it with a piece of pliers and I pull it until the spring hits the inside of the sandal. Okay, that's the plan. So I stretch it until the spring hits the inside of this plant handle and then I bend it. It will release a little bit, obviously, because my pliers will not be able to get close enough to get it perfectly bent at the edge here. However, after I have it bent, what I could if I want to do is grab my uh, soldering iron 
and actually embed it in the outside edge here. That is an idea. That's kind of like gluing it and it does ruin the part, but it's an idea. Alternatively, I just leave it hanging loose and we don't worry about how it looks because it's on the edge and nobody's gonna notice. Uh, the third alternative, uh, there's a third and fourth alternative, right? So this wall, I think this wall is only four millimeters right now. Uh, actually, if that is the case, then I am screwing up a little bit here. Where are you at? Okay, no, you, yeah, you are four millimeters. Okay, I probably should change that. So, that is this cut right here. Yeah, let's instead do this from the inside face, that face, and that will be zero offset. So now, wait, that does not look right. I wanted the, oh, I don't have the inside face. That is why, okay, 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 okay. So minus six then. All right, the point being is that I could also, back to, I have this random thing right here. I could recess this a little bit. So minus three, let's say. So I recess that, the spring will be sitting in here and either A, you don't see it because it's, you know, hidden a bit out of view or B, I print out a cover or put a sticker over top of the end of this and that covers it up. So that's actually probably the most reasonable way to do it and probably the way I'll go with it. So. That is that. That handles both our torsion issue and our holding these pieces together issue. So now we can actually go ahead and move on to the, uh, what you call it? And the mount. And the, not only the mount, but the trigger for the micro switch. Now that is actually an interesting one, now that I'm thinking about it, because, huh. So originally, I was thinking that we'd be intersecting the shaft with the handle at some point, which would be the easy way of getting this in there. The problem is, is that we're not doing that right now. So, hmm. uh, all right, first thing first, let's grab the micro switch, bring it in here. Insert it into current design. Please save. Okay, sure. Uh, and this is digital throttle stick input. Eh, digital throttle input. All right. Insert. All right. And this is the most important thing I was curious about and it does in fact fit inside of the handle. Okay. Um, I don't want to put it all the way down the end though. I don't want to put it all the way down this end, but I'm thinking about mounting it down this end, which is a bit ambitious and probably a bad idea. All right. Um, <laughs> Let's see, let's see. So, the things we need to resolve right here is getting, uh, actually, all right, here's, here is a way of doing it that is not as obnoxious, okay. Uh, actually, leave it right there for now. So I've got a bit of a lip here. What is my distance? 10 millimeters, yeah, full 10 millimeters. So I can actually put the trigger on the end here and between two of these screws, have a slot. Yeah, there we go, that is a good idea. I like that idea. Uh, that is, what is that plane? That is, outside face 
uh, outside of end of handle. Okay. So, got here outside of start of handle, I guess, since I called the other one the end. Cool. We'll go ahead and put a peg on this end, and then we'll have that peg uh, trip the, what's you call it? I didn't want that though. So let's go ahead and turn the handle shaft off for right now. And just really quick, a quick sanity check for how this is printing. We can print it on this end. We'll have a little bit. We may want to go ahead and I've been getting, so uh, back when I first started, uh, support material was a really, really obnoxious thing to work with. It did not remove well from prints and it oft very often ruined parts of the print. That was my experience when I first started 3D printing. I have done some support material for the past few pieces that I've been printing this past week. And it frankly has gotten a lot better. It's still not perfectly great. It doesn't leave terribly good finishes on the other side. It's not much better than just bridging it. However, it does make me a lot more comfortable because it's gotten a lot easier to remove doing support material for a section this large especially because again part of the consideration is that the support material is you know material you're just going to throw out it's money which is why i try to avoid it most of the time but this is only three millimeters right here right so this is three millimeters of area right here it's not going to be very much support material so we'll print this face down and i probably will print this with support material just here anything else does not get support material so the reason that's important is because I'm going to put a peg on this end and therefore we can't position this on the bed because it's going to have a peg sticking out this end. Now, uh, one of these things where we have, uh, let's see, 120 degree phase between our screws that mount the uh, the handle shaft to the center shaft so that is plenty of space because again as we have found something like 30 degrees or even as low as 15 degrees is not unreasonable for a turning mechanism on this joystick we found that any you know 30 degrees is more than enough play so to say and more enough uh, uh, I was gonna say input output but that's not the word I'm looking for uh, feedback I, I mean it's like input feedback is kind of what I'm thinking but those kind of sound diametrically opposed but the idea is that the, the sensation seems to be enough it's like okay yeah I did turn this when I've gotten to 30 degrees as opposed to the point being is that back when we first started doing this I was like well it's got to be like 90 degrees right like a full quarter, quarter turn feels like a turn now it's really anywhere between 15 and 30 degrees is what I'm finding is actually feels reasonable for something that turns point being is that that 30 degrees fits easily within the 120 degrees. Otherwise that's the thing we'd have to worry about is that this turn, this handle turns too far and we end up running into one of the mounting bolts. And furthermore, if we had four mounting bolts, that would be uh, 90 degrees apart. And again, our 30 degrees still fits inside of the 90 degrees just fine. So we could upgrade to, four mounting bolts and be just fine. Now, even though I did not project out this hole right here, I realized that I really should because again, if anything needs to change, I want to start this as close to that. Uh, I want to put this, uh, what you call it? This shaft, this peg rather this peg as close to that mounting hole as possible is the idea here because that gives me the most amount of play here and again anybody using the machine will not be able to tell the difference between a peg being right here a peg being right here or the peg starting right here ending right here you know they really won't be able to tell where the peg's at so it doesn't necessarily matter that it is weirdly off center here you know so even though this is like seven degrees let's say off center they really shouldn't be able to tell so 
Uh, meanwhile, for the peg width, we have 10 millimeters work width. I kind of want this to be kind of chunky so that it doesn't break. So let's go with six millimeters. Now, that being said, it is chunky and hopefully not going to break. But um, hold on. Let me take a quick look at the handle because I just realized we're going to have to put a slot in here. So this doesn't come into play. So unless we want to make the handle also, oh, actually it looks like the handle we did make the full size of the, uh, the handle shaft rather mounting plate. Looks like it is the full size of the flange here. Okay, never mind. Don't have to worry about it. So, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. yeah, I guess we don't really have much to worry about. Ignore what I was saying. So six millimeters. Mm. I was going to say I want at least, yeah, okay, I can make this three millimeters here. It's one of those things where it's a, eh, all right, I guess I'll make it two millimeters. I was going to say we're not going to, one of those things, this peg, sh it should be a little far from this edge just because we don't want to leave some meat for the slot around here, right? It's not actually 100% necessary to have the slot conform to the peg. Honestly, it could just be a full cutout around here, which, meh, you know what? Actually, yeah, we're going to go ahead and do that. We're going to just cut the area out. And what I wanted this two millimeter space for, however, was, uh, let me drag this out just so that this not snap to the wrong edge. I wanted this as an offset from the bolt was the whole entire point. So there is that. We have some offset from the bolt, so the bolt has some meat around it. And actually, I just realized I should grab that instead. I should grab the head because we countersunk these instead and do that. So let me delete that tangent and retangent that. Please get to be construction line. Thank you. So there is that. Uh, this, so our thickness here is because we want it going definitely more than this. Actually, 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 let's back up just a step and get these guys put together because we uh, are ready. We have everything else set so we can go ahead and align them. Uh, align, align, thank you. Handle. And this will be going right against the inside of the handle face over here. There we go. And hit OK and turn the other one back on. And there we go. So again, we got the three millimeter space in here. And the reason I did this is because at this point, whoops, control Z, uh, control Z, please. Thank you. Capture vision. There we go. At this point, I'd sooner just extrude this out to make sure that it gets at least this far, just in case something changes. And then plus, let's say another eight millimeters on top of that. So. Uh, I am extruding on the wrong object though. So let me hop back up to handle. There we go. Distance to object. And like I said, we'll start at eight millimeters and we'll see if we have to change that. Actually, if the inside wall is, let's say four millimeters, right? We probably do. So this is going to go into the center uh, handlebar area right here. It's going to go into the center handlebar area, which means that we need to get past the wall, the inside wall of the handlebar area, point being. So that's at least four millimeters. So we probably want to go something more like 12, just to make sure that we're hitting the micro switch, which is going to be mounted sideways is my plan in here. And actually, I said that, but this is a little bit awkward, is it not? So let us back up even further. Uh, which one moved when I, let's see. When I did this movement, which one of you two moved? Okay, that moved. So I do wanna do this beforehand. I wanna do the center shaft here beforehand. I'm going to keep the center, I'm thinking I'm going to keep the center shaft relatively square, 
just because we may want to mount to the other side, like I said. Uh, so the options are, back to if we want to make this a two handlebar design, we can either print two copies of this, or we can make the center shaft big enough right now to mount stuff to the other side afterwards. And the fact of the matter is, is that it could be stuff. It literally could be not necessarily another one of these handles, but in theory we could mount other, like, buttons or whatnot to the other side. It's just one of these matters of modifying it by hand rather than having pre-designed mounting spaces because frankly I don't know what exactly I'm going to need. So let us go ahead and design this mount then and which direction do I want to design this mount from in that case? Uh, ba, 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 ba. Do I want to design it from the top? Mm. I kind of think I do. And the, uh, ba, 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 ba. let's see. So I kind of think I do just because that lets me easier to uh, define the space on the inside of it, right? And then the height and the depth of it can just be decided afterwards. It can just be modified afterwards. So yeah, I think it's easier to do this. So I'm going to take a tangent off this guy with reference to our origin. There we go. And that is still in the correct orientation. And then I think I'm going to, um, so it's a question, right? With the micro switch, the micro switch, if I'm going to put it anywhere in this area, where did my micro switch go? There's the micro switch. Oh, it's on the other side of the handle. Okay, gotcha. Um, one of these things back to. Uh, all right, never mind. I guess the flange on the back side. I was gonna say it might be a little awkward to fit it in if I line, if I design this straight off the top here. But yeah, that may not be a problem actually. Okay, gotcha. Mm, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, all right, all right, I'm feeling comfortable with this. So let us go ahead and project off this guy. And then we're gonna want some amount of space in here. And I think I do want it being, the same size as that. I don't think I want it that much bigger. Uh, let me take a quick look at the micro switch. Do, 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 do. Uh, close this bar. I always leave this bar open. Where'd the... Oh, I inserted it in here. Whoopsies. That was a mistake. Okay. Ah, uh, maybe we just delete this out. All right, finish sketch first and then delete out. There we go. And let's bring that back to, I'll do that before I start the sketch. Literally just close the design panel, insert into current design. Okay. So point being is close the data panel, handle, this guy I'm thinking is going to, so it depends, right? Mm. The peg is going to rotate around here, right? Where we intersect the micro switch is kind of up for the debate. The only question is, is whether or not the micro switch modify a line fits inside here and how it fits inside here. So, for example, uh, as you can see right here, so in this case, pretend the peg's going the opposite direction. It doesn't necessarily matter how the peg's going, but the peg can intersect that, and I have access to the what's called right now. Access to the terminals with the wires running down. So that is actually probably the most ideal way to set it up the problem is is that we're rotating this way we're rotating towards the front and since we're rotating towards the front that then means that we actually want to flop this around 
try to grab the correct one. Please, fusion. There we go. Flippity floppity. Nope, not flippity floppity. All right. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Do this, and then I'm just gonna rotate you because that's the easiest way to do this. Rotate. Uh, you're already centered on this, so I'll just use this as my axis. 180, there we go. So in this case, we're gonna have to move the, and the reason I was doing all this, and why I started this before extruding the peg, is because now at this point, the peg actually wants to start out over here and then rotate our 30 degrees to this. And again, the nice thing about this is, that, well, there's a couple of nice things. One, the mounting holes for the micro switch are on the inside of the shaft here, which means that I can mount the micro switch and then mount the shaft on afterwards, which is a nice little bonus there. Instead, uh, the other option would have been to have to include the micro switches uh, bolts in consideration of the wall and countersink stuff and whatnot, or add another wall on this side on the opposite side to mount the micro switch to. That's the other option, but this allows us to mount it to the outside wall, and we don't have to worry about the bolt heads being. Actually, we probably let's see. So we yeah we do want the bolt heads on the outside which suggests because we're not going to be able to get to unless we do this in multiple pieces okay we might want to do this in multiple pieces we might want to have one of these sides or both of these sides uh detach is a possibility here and in that case if that's how i want it Nah, I'm going to want to countersink the bolts anyway. Okay. That's where we're at. Okay. So the micro switch fits fully within this center shaft right here. The center handlebars, as I've been calling it. In which case, I don't have to worry about the design of those center handlebars right now. So let us come here. And I am going to go ahead and define the wall thickness right now. Uh, bu bu okay, so actually, I take that back. I'm going, th again, I think it makes most sense for these walls, it, at least easiest. It, it is easiest, I should say, for these walls to be detachable, which means that I need to accommodate the bolt heads to attach them, which is about two millimeters plus a wall thickness. And somehow I ended up with two lines again. Thank you, Fusion. All right, so two millimeters plus a wall thickness, which let's say three millimeters because we're already getting pretty thick. So that's gonna end up being five millimeters right here. And do, 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 do. Oh, okay, gotcha. Uh, so I've talked about this before. I've had this happen before to me. Back to everything saves locally for me ignore that everything saves locally for me I don't see anything on there that's too yeah cool uh, everything saves locally which means that my hard drive gets filled up pretty quickly when I'm streaming exploit that cut Uh, hopefully this doesn't I, I don't recall this lagging my computer too badly last time when I moved these guys off here stream raws and frankly I'm pack ratting all this stuff I really probably should just delete most of it of my old stream uh, local recordings don't really need them so anyway while that's getting taken care of uh, Interesting question. Do we drop any frames because of it? Nope. It doesn't look like we dropped any frames because of it. That's good. Good to know. So, uh, this wall is going to be a full five millimeters right here. 
Um. Yeah. All right. I was thinking about shelling to begin with, but which is why I was doing this right here, and I changed that to construction line. It, probably not the best of ideas. So instead, we'll go ahead and do this: three millimeters, three millimeters, and I'm doing this instead of offset because. I have two different uh, sizes that I need here, five millimeters and five millimeters. So I can't just go all the way around. So let's go ahead and extrude this. And now how high up do we need this? 20 to the top of it is right about there. So let me grab my calipers really quick to eyeball it up. My calipers are what did I do with my calipers? Calipers, where you at, boys? Do, 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 do. Oh, literally right in front of my face. Okay. Excellent. All right, I'm thinking this is gonna end up being, I'm gonna call it 90 off of the extrusion, 90 millimeters off the extrusion. And do I want, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and extrude this straight down to extrusion. And unlike the other, a lot of the other things I've had sitting off the extrusion, uh, actually, mm hmm. So the other, all right, let's make this because the joystick, the joystick, I went ahead and put between two extrusions right. And that's another one of these full handed inputs, just like what we're working with right now. So, let me go ahead and actually just make this, uh, whatever the micro switch is, plus let's say an extra inch. So it ends up being like 75. So I'll call it 80 instead of 90. Uh, frankly, even that is maybe a little bit too high, but I'll worry about that later. My biggest problem is that again, if I'm gonna do a platform of this, I need some room to do the platform. But you know, maybe one of these things I may be overthinking things. Uh, the next thing is I did not define what I needed on the inside here. The micro switch is only about 10 millimeters, about round numbers, 10 millimeters. And the question is how much extra space do I want in here to play with stuff on the inside? And furthermore, what actually looks acceptable, just visually speaking? So I think I'm going to go with 75, even though that's going to leave a lot of dead space for the micro switch. The micro switch is only going to take up, you know, a seventh of it, <laughs> you know, yeah, one seven point five of it, I guess. Uh, so it's a lot of dead space, but at the same time, if I'm looking at this right now, so let me just hit the finish sketch. Right, that does not look unreasonable. I don't think that looks unreasonable right there. Uh, and furthermore, if you're gonna grab this with two hands, so let me just, with my calipers, get myself set up for, I said that was 75, right? Yeah, 75. So calipers, two hands on 75. There's 75 right there. Yeah, that's reasonable distance, I think, if I'm gonna have both hands on it a reasonable space distance between the two. So that is where we're going to put that. And the next thing I actually wanted to do So this gets a little bit sketchy. A little bit sketchy. Because I want to put the wall in here, but I also actually wanted to round this off. And I need the roof. I also need the roof, obviously. Hmm. So let me make this actually solid instead for the time being, because that will make my life easier. And 
delete it. <laughs> uh, just because my 80. Okay, it was 80. Good. I was going to say, I think that's 80, but I just said 75, so I'm getting myself confused. So let's uh, actually, com new component, makes sense. Minus 80, new component. New component, there we go. All right. So on this new component, I want to trace out uh, outside left side. I want to trace out that, uh, what you call it, in order to cut the top and to define a, to offset to define a area for it to uh, a panel, for a panel to fit in. Outside, left side. This is my rationale right now at the moment. So we'll grab that and then we will go ahead and make that panel. And I actually only want the outside of it. So let's, whoops, I'm going to need the wall there too, aren't I? Okay, we are in there. Good. I keep on hitting the E button, which is why I'm getting myself confused. So that explains that one. So this, I wanted to go distance all. Flip it. Why does that look s okay? I guess it was just my eyeballs. Okay, so there we go. So now it you know lines up with that. That's what I was going for. And now, also on this design, since I have those right there, I wanted to put a slight offset. Turn the handle off. Turn the bodies off. And turn the origin off. Turn the mic switch off. We're turning a lot of stuff off right now. So slightly recess it a little bit. Uh, just a little bit. And then... Actually, I guess what I sh uh, No, no, that's good, that's good. Okay, I was going to say, I kind of wanted three millimeters from this edge, but we're already tangent to that edge with that. So that is actually perfect. That is literally what I wanted. And then we're going to take this down here, perpendicular, perpendicular, and then tangent. And this will be our panel that gets removed. And then I guess I'll just extrude it right now, maybe. Uh, let's see. Ah, shoot. Yeah. All right. I uh, this popped in my head at one point when I was doing the sizes, but it's going to. I need to go back and change this because we need something to butt up against and bolt down to. So uh, we come back to this sketch, and this actually needs to be. Uh, I'm only going to add an extra two millimeters, and this really should just reference that. I'll do the same thing over here keep things symmetrical so the point being is that this hole is good the whole size is gonna be different from the outside size that way it's sitting up against it that way it doesn't fall through and we can actually bolt to it so this is the sketch I wanted not that guy and this is a new component right now this is the panel and this panel is going to be minus five. So the panel is going to be minus five. I'm going to delete out of the other guy, out of the body, that panel. Uh, we could obviously combine, but yeah, yeah. You know what? I'm just going to combine really quick. That's good. It's fine. Well, that's not combined. That is. So that body, that body cut keep tools this is fine and then I want to come back over here grab this and we want to make that lip that I was talking about so I'm gonna go ahead and project the cutout turn off that wall so there's our cutout and then I want to have that lift lip offset as well do 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 and I'll only do two because it's not really that big of a deal and 
And actually, it may end up being a little bit of a deal. I just realized, but we'll burn that bridge when we get there. That line is not good. That is not a good line. Do do do. Perpendicular, please. Thank y'all. Do 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 do. All right, and make sure that I. Where are these other sketches coming from? What sketch am I in right now? Oh, I'm in the top right now? How did I get to the top? Oh my goodness, I can't believe. Alright, 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 alright. Control Z. Nothing happened. Control Y. Is that component still out here? No, that component's not out here. Alright, cool. Alright, so... Center shaft. Okay. Try again. Take three. All right. Somebody obviously needs lunch. All right. Minus five for the component. Combine the component. Oops. Control Z because that was not keep tools. Keep tools. All right. Outside wall. And now we come back in here and get that. Project that. Turn the component off. Turn the other sketch off. Do that. Much better, much better. And we said that was two. Two, and then we can delete that out. Uh, actually, I'm not going to delete that just yet. I take it back. I take that back. We will not delete that just yet because we haven't mirrored anything yet. And I don't want to delete it until... Actually, I guess I can delete it. It just gets a little awkward. Fusion might just complain is all I'm thinking about, so... But chances are it will be fine. Alright, so there's that. Whoops. There we go. And now on this guy. Oh, I should have. Okay. I take it back. Uh, no, actually, this is fine. This is fine. This is fine. Okay. In here. Uh, buh, buh, buh. Construction. Outside wall. Uh, we need space basically for the uh, bolts to connect to here was my hesitation there and let me just really quick look at this okay I want to avoid those spots and actually I've run into an issue here where that is not going to work because obviously that is halfway between our wall here and the other thing we can bring it down Again, those mounting things were a bit arbitrary. So let us go ahead and come back up here and fix that really quick before I forget about it. Control Z. Uh, control Y. Where is, where is, where is, oh, it's this guy right here. All right, again, mm, 
Uh, okay, that's not arbitrary in that case because that's my two millimeter wall. Uh, we got more than two millimeter walls down here. Okay, we're fine. Okay, we can make this tangent instead. All right, all right, all right, all right. So there is that. That brings that down. Now let's look at this guy to see whether or not that. Oh, everything shifted down. Right. Everything shifted down. Huh. Okay, then. Which means that we need to go a bit larger. All right. Uh, this obviously we still have to not only figure this out but also do the base so this is going to end up being a two-parter we ran into a situation over here where I wasn't really sure where we were going with this so that slowed us down uh, otherwise we got a heck of a lot done so I'm just gonna really quick paint stuff plastic and then we are going to take a break and we'll come back at another point Where is my pink? Oh man, I was gonna use pink because I just made it and it is not here. So I will have to hop back into the other file and pull that out in order to get to it. Uh, make sure it's saved. So the plan when we come back, when we reconvene here, is instead of having this guy completely tangent to this guy, I'm gonna go ahead and offset him so that he's larger than that guy and then that will give us the meat for the bolt on the back end of this to be inside of the plate and we will be off to the races so uh, it, I'm still gonna keep this design right here this shell design right here but we just need to have it's just gonna end up being larger than this mounting plate right here is all that really comes down to otherwise again it's pretty straightforward to do, attach the mounting clip and to do the peg which is what we still need to uh, the other things we still need to do so that shouldn't hold us up hopefully knock on wood we should be able to get that done relatively quickly uh, but after that point then we just have then we're yeah then we just need to attach it to extrusion and we will be good to go so yeah should be done with part two you know when we get done part two part two should be relatively straightforward and therefore we can then get this printed and then we will be fully set up if I well I mean at this point not even if I decide to I will at least play tooth and tail on stream at least once again I was super busy this last week so I didn't really have an opportunity to play it at all this past week so I'm have not changed my opinion on it at all yet but since we're putting all this work in may as well at least play it on stream once just to demonstrate otherwise I look forward to the next stream uh, obviously we have a couple other streams coming up the uh, stream deck is coming I have something very important and very cool to show you guys with that one I wanted to get it wired completely up before I did that uh, so that is why I did not do that this morning, but I'm very excited to show you something I did with that. Otherwise, uh, I went ahead and assembled it this morning since I finally had time to assemble it. And there, I'm not too happy with the design at the moment. So we might have to do a redesign on the stream deck, but we will, again, as I always say, burn that bridge when we get there. Otherwise, aside from that, obviously you uh, have we haven't done anything on the mini CNC in a while. Might do a stream of that. Probably should do a stream of that to get that moving again. And the uh, conductive epoxy experiments are obviously waiting on the mini CNC again, not for processing but for testing purposes. So that is in queue and waiting. Aside from that. Uh, oh, the uh, stream animation, as I always forget about it. That guy, I mean, I really want to get him done at some point. It's just obviously I'm doing all these other streams at the moment, so we'll figure out something to do with that. So anyway, uh, keep tuned and look for me to go live again, and we'll get back to this, and then we'll move on to the next thing, whichever one I end up uh, deciding should go next, which, again, 
may actually be the mini CNC uh, or the stream, uh, what's call it? Because with the stream, uh, the stream animations, I should say, because the stream deck, I'm not really sure if we're going to redesign that because again, I'm a bit iffy on how this is designed right now. So anyway, that's the TLDR and by TLDR, I mean entirely too long and uh, I don't know. I was trying to think of a witty one for R that was not read because you're just listening to me. But yeah, that's the short and long of it. So as always, I hope you guys had a good time uh, watching today. I appreciate it. And I hope that you have a great and wonderful day, afternoon, or evening, wherever you got in the world. And I will catch you when I go live next.